What's up, gamers? We're back with actual Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Finally, finally, finally. After hours and hours and hours of waiting. We're gonna just jump right into the story. I have no idea what episode P4 is. I'm assuming it's a recap of Persona 4, but we're gonna go through it anyway because it's, it's before the Persona 4 arena story mode. We have the baby's first fighting game, literally. I've never played a fighting game before. Did you play the tutorial? I played some of it. I, I played some of it. I played some of it. <laughs> Not the whole thing, but I played like half of it. Oh, I don't want to play through all the tutorials. See, look, I was having a struggle. I was having a struggle playing the tutorial. <laughs> look, look. I did all these, right? This, I was having a struggle. I can't expect to clear the tutorial, how can you expect to win battles? Shut up! <laughs> Shut up. So like this. What hecking button is that? See, I, like, I try. Look. Down, up, down, up. And then press a button. Down, up, down, up, and press a button. But it doesn't work! Nothing I can do works, man! <laughs> Don't jump! How do you not jump? You go down, side, up. Right? Down, side, up, down, side, up. So when you go up, it jumps. You start at the bottom or roll it towards the right. Down, forward, down, forward. <laughs> Man, I hate hearing Yosuke in pain. That really hurts. But I just want to play the heckin' video game, you know? <laughs> oh, Yosuke. <sighs> I didn't think this would be so difficult. But it's a freaking fighting game, so... Look. Down. Oh. I see. I see now. <laughs> I thought I thought it was downright up. You're not coming? I thought it was downright up, but it's not. <laughs> Go. Oh my god. Go. Go. I'm doing it. Aren't I? Am I not doing it? I, I see the lightning. It's happening. I'm doing some type of lightning. Maybe we'll lose the computers. Shut up! It's not working, man! Yosuke! What? Ha. What? I just had to scream Yosuke's name and it worked. Hit me. Hit me. Okay, when awakened, your max SP will rise to 150 and you'll gain 50 SP. You'll also be able to use your awakened SP skill. <laughs> okay, down right side. Reverse Zeodyne. Then press Y. <laughs> Here we go. This is good. This is. Oh my god. I did it! I did it! I just need to hit him with it. Yeah! Let's go! 
Oh my god. Easy. Okay, now this is hard. <laughs> okay. Use reversal burst to counter when you're under attack. The burst gauge is full. The word burst is shown. Press uh, that. Your opponent is attacking. Why do I feel like I'm playing a rhythm game? Okay. Dodge tags on the ground. Ah. For jump attacks and midair skills while hopping, but not double jump. God, there's so much. Dash cancels. Okay. See what happens when you're frozen. Try getting hit with a dry ice attack. He doesn't have ice moves. What the heck is that? Ouch. <laughs> I see. How happens when you're panicked? Left and right are reversed. <laughs> no. Oh my god. I freaking hate that. Come get me. Come get me. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ouch. Here we go. Ouch. Here we go. Too slow. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I am just using the D-pad now because using the uh, stick is way too confusing. I've learned enough. I've learned enough. We're playing story now. After 40 minutes. A mysterious guest. If that ever happens. Ooh. What does this have different pathways? How freaking long is this story? Oh my god! Oh my god! And this is P4 Arena. I did an instant kill attack and it crashed my game! <laughs> oh my god. Lou. Oh, I thought it was gonna read it out for me. Gosh dang it. I'm gonna have to read. The floor, the ceiling, the furnishings, everything is blue. I did not think I would have to read. I thought it would read it for me. It's quite unlike what I normally see throughout my day. Yeah, fate moment, literally. And yet, my heart is mysteriously calm. I recognize the slight rumbling as the engine and realize that I'm in a car. Or rather, someplace else I recognize. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Heck yeah! Voice acting! Let's go! Hello, bizarre faced old man! The old man with the bizarre face sitting before me makes an expression that appears to be a smile. Sitting quietly next to the old man is a woman as beautiful as and delicate as an ice sculpture. Ah. It seems we have a guest with an intriguing destiny. <laughs> so this is the beginning of Persona 4. <laughs> right? I have to read. <laughs> this is just the beginning of Persona My 4, right? My name is Igor. I am delighted to make your acquaintance. Mm -hmm. The Velvet Room. Igor. Even though I'm barely conscious, I remember that this is not the first time I've heard those names. Oh, I see. This is a dream. It's happened in the past. I've been in this room before. My memory is correct. What he says next is... This place exists between dream and reality. Mind and matter. See, what you guys say is interesting. So that's why I read your comments. <laughs> I'd rather read your comments than this, you know? Though, I did ask for this. I wanted story, so... It is a room that only those who are bound by a contract mm -hmm. may enter. Mm -hmm. It may be that such a fate awaits you in the near future. The words I expect to hear fall from the old man's mouth. 
I'm surprised that I still remember them. Another me, the one not in the dream, can't help but smile at that. No. Why don't you introduce yourself? Oh my god. I remember this, too. I said my name here. It forged a contract with them. And so I answer. I thought you bought this because it was interesting. I bought it because I like Persona 4 and Persona 3. I wanted, I wanted to see their characters more because I freaking love them. So, you know, I, I'm here for the voice acting. <laughs> I'm here for the voice acting. <laughs> you, Narukami. And here we see the canon name. Yep, yep. When I open my eyes, the light is so blinding I have to squint. For a moment, I can't figure out where I am, and I look around. Right. I was on my way back. They named a cannon? <laughs> oh my god. I mutter to myself and look out the window. The sky is somewhat cloudy, unfortunately, but the scenery is as peaceful as always. It seems that I fell asleep on the train headed to the countryside where I spent the last year in Inaba. If I recall correctly, when I first came to that town, it was an afternoon just like this. Hydrate? Uh-oh. I don't have any hydration liquids. Um... Can I swallow my own spit? <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> I don't have anything con to consume besides this freaking thing of ketchup that I brought. I'm not drinking that. <laughs> I'm not drinking that. <laughs> if I recall correctly, it was an afternoon just like this. I dozed off in the same way back then and was summoned to the Velvet Room. That was when Igor said the misfortunes would befall me, and just as he's foretold, I was dragged into an outrageous murder mystery. This was- that was no ordinary case. The Midnight Channel, Shadows, and Personas, the Powers of the Heart. Yeah, spoilers for Persona 4 Golden. <laughs> spoilers for Persona 4 and Persona 3. Like, all of it. You know. Soji Seta is his uh, manga name, and since I'm a heckin' fangirl, I know the ship name between uh, Yosuke. Yosuke and uh, uh, Soji, what they say. Soyu. I don't know why it's Soyo, but for spoilers, Persona 5 Morgana is a cat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I saw things that I could uh, scarcely believe be believed. Hold on. Fast. Okay. There. But I made memories there can that can never be replaced as well. We gained the powers of Personas and we suffered together. I stood with my friends on the investigation team against these misfortunes and fought alongside them. There was no way I could have overcome such ordeals without their help. I wonder what everyone's been up to. For solving my mi the, the mystery, it was decided that I would leave Inaba since my parents would be returning from overseas around the same time. It's been about two months since I last saw them all, as they said goodbye to me at the train station. I decided to stay at the Dojima res residence during Golden Week so I could spend the holiday with my friends. Of course, my uncle was happy to hear this, and his only daughter, Nanako, should be glad to see me too. Oh, damn it! I still haven't picked up Yosuke's gift. It's Yosuke's birthday? Well, it's something quite particular, I guess. Actually, I had received a call from Teddy, one of the investigation team friends, this morning. The details of the conversation were a bit troublesome. Hey, <laughs> why are you listing up names, Rain? You gotta kill us. <laughs> Is this Sensei? Teddy! Yeah, what's up? I'm really sorry to bring this up, but I forgot to tell you something very important. I have a special request for the souvenirs. I'm sure you'll be bringing your bear's friend. <laughs> Daddy, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to tell people what you want them to bring to you as souvenirs. I already have souvenirs for everyone, but oh well. Sure enough, Teddy was only asking for some snacks that aren't sold in Inaba, so it wasn't much trouble. Ah, uh, but there was one oh, problem. Oh, and one more thing. Can I ask you to pick up something for Yosuke, too? I was planning on bringing something for everyone anyway, but go ahead. Cool! 
Well, Yosuke's been down in the dumps after his mommy burned his favorite nurse. Oh. She was what I called scorching hot. <laughs> 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 oh, just kidding. <laughs> A nurse? Ah, oh, come on, Sensei. Yeah, you know I know. what I'm talking about. I know. His nurse magazine with the chest examinations and the bear behinds. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And oh my you God. expect me to buy him a replacement? <laughs> of course, silly. People coming to visit are supposed to bring presents. Mm. Are you sure? All right. Oh, I was planning to head back tomorrow. But since we're meeting up early, I decided to go back today. Can you pass that on to everyone? Aha! Then the sexy nurses will be arriving even sooner. It'll be like, like, Sensei, we have an emergency patient. Yusuke will be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I freaking love Teddy. Okay, then. Oh my we'll god. Be waiting for you. I'm a little worried now. Hope he isn't telling everyone something. Everybody something that would give them the wrong idea. Well, I should just call again once I get there. But in the end. Nurses, huh? <laughs> you! <laughs> you! I wasn't able to pick one up for him. How can I put it? I'd feel bad for Yosuke if I gave him that magazine and every time he opened it, his friend's face kept popping in his head. I have to- and I have to think Yosuke has his pride too. He doesn't need me buying him this stuff. Then again, this is Yosuke we're talking about. I'm sure will understand if I explain my reasoning. I remember the nurse from P4, yeah. Yeah, go buy your bro some dirty magazines, buddy. Yeah, he is a bro, so he would, right? Probably. Now pulling into Yaso Inaba. This will be the last stop. Yaso Inaba. Thank oh. you, conductor. End of the line already. Looks like I've been asleep for long for a lot longer than I thought. Just as the thought came to me, a certain worry crossed my mind. If I had a dream of the Velvet Room, does that mean I'm going to be dragged into another adventure? Oh, I wonder. No, I shouldn't think such things. I'm overthinking it. Igor had said. I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, after all, so it's nothing but a dream. Quite misleading, since I've had dreams of being summoned to that room ever since. The train begins to slow, and I ta take that as my cue to gather my belongings from the luggage rack above me. When the train comes to a complete stop and the doors open, even the smell of the wind evokes a sense of nostalgia. <laughs> I think I'm getting a little too sentimental. Step out to the platform with a wry smile. Yeah, you're gonna be dragged- place a bookmark. Okay. Oh, it's a checkpoint, I see. Standing in front of the train station, but this town is as quiet as it's always been. I realize that the sun has started to set and the orange sky envelops the world. Now, what should I do? Is it me or do the heads look a little big compared to their bodies? Is it just me or? Today is May 2nd. According to the calendar, the latter half of the holidays will begin tomorrow. I told Dojima son I was going to arrive today, but he seems to be too busy with work to come get me. Ryotaro Dojima. He's my uncle. I stayed with him last year. He's a detective with the Inaba police, and he's raising his elementary school aged daughter, Nanako, by himself. I see, it seems that like he was suddenly contacted by the de detective with the Metropolitan Police Department regarding last year's case, and will have to work late. What happened last year was very serious, so I guess it's not too surprising he's so busy. Shouldn't have worried about it. I recall how apologetic he sounded over the phone and can't help smiling. I told him I knew the way over from the station, but a bag packed with necessities and souvenirs for everyone turns out to be quite a load. Nanako must be waiting for me alone at the house, so I wanted to get there as soon as possible too. To be honest, I didn't know when the bus would come. Maybe I should just call for a taxi? Just as I'm thinking this... Huh? Huh? Nanako? Big bro! Why is she here by herself? It is Nanako. There's no way I'd mistake her. You came her. to meet me all on your own? Why'd she come to the station all by herself? True, the Dojima residence is within walking distance, but it couldn't have been easy for her. Even though it's so light out now, it'll get dark soon and the country roads are barely lit. What would she have done if I hadn't been here? I'm about to voice my concerns, but Nanako sounds slightly proud when Don't she says- Don't worry, Dad knows about it. He gave me uh... money for the bus. He said he couldn't make it, so I came instead. Ah, okay. Welcome back, big bro. I wanted to see you so much. Oh, very wholesome. <laughs> Thanks. I'm happy.
happy to see you again too. Uh, Nanako playable when I know, right? Ken's playable, so why not Nanako? I see. She must have wanted to show me that she's grown up too. She's around that age after all. For a moment, I'm surprised that Dojima san let her do this. But I can kind of imagine what kind of conversation took place. I could have already been a capable girl. But over the past year, her housekeep housekeeping skills have improved greatly. She's proven herself to be very reliable. She takes the lead in many things within the house, and even Dojima san can't compete with her sometimes. I can't easily imagine that scene in my mind. And it's true that I'm glad someone came to welcome me. I take Nanako's hand as we begin walking side by side. Well, no sense standing around here. What's in the fridge at home? Well, she is justice, isn't she? <laughs> Lots. Dad and I bought a ton of stuff since you were coming to visit. Nanako said so. Then it must really he must have really bought a lot. Jimmy san said he'd pick up dinner for us, but if that's the case, maybe I should put together something to go go with it. She asks Nanako what she wants to eat, and she looks back with a twinkle in her eyes. Are you gonna cook dinner? Ooh, I want to help. Nanako and I make a small talk when we walk through Inaba together for the first time in a little while. Being here like this makes me feel like I've gone back in time to a year ago. After we get back to the Dojima house, I hurry and unpack my belongings before heading to the kitchen. Nanako helps me out as diligently as she, can, as she had claimed earlier. The way she makes the eggs seem more skillful than before. Such a good girl, Nanako. Good evening. This is the evening journal with news for May 2nd. Our top story is on the domestic airline that was hijacked yesterday. Oh? TV in the living room echoes throughout the house. Thinking back on it, it was quite often in this place. It was on quite often in this place. When I first came to Inaba, Nanako was practically being raised by the television. There had been this odd sense of distance between us around that time. She hadn't started calling me Big Bro and we didn't cook together like we're doing now. The little things that bring back memories. As we're about to be done making dinner, Doji-san arrives with some deluxe sushi. Nanako quickly gets up and rushes to the door. She seems so happy when her, when her father comes home. Aww, wholesome. Dojima-san apologizes about the sudden increase in his workload, and we all sit at the table and begin eating. Being here like this makes me feel like two months I was gone never happened at all. It was a warm atmosphere, as if I've always been a part of this family, and have lived here with them for my entire life. I wonder how his fucking parents feel, him saying this, this stuff, <laughs> you know? I thank them both from uh, the deep in my heart, and I give them souvenirs I brought for them. We enjoy chatting with, chatting with each other as a family. Like, his parents still exist. They're still alive. Oh my god, I see a hee-ho. I see a hee-ho in the back. <laughs> oh, and the Catherine uh, calendar. I see. Oh, I don't see anything else, though. Another familiar room. This is the room that was prepared for, uh, prepared for me on the second floor of the Dojima residence. My uncle had fallen asleep after the excitement. After carrying her to her room, I tell my uncle that I'll be going to bed early as well, since I have plans. All he said was okay, gesturing towards the second floor. A little perplexed by this, but I have my suspicions. As I open the door to my old room, it seems I was right. The room was no different from when I had been living here. It's exactly the same when I left Inaba. I close the door with a feeling of wistfulness. I sit down on my sofa and consider my uncle's thoughtfulness, a sigh and exhaustion from the long journey. I'll be able to see my friends tomorrow. Considering that there are still several days left in this holiday, it may be nice to leave early tomorrow and go visit the so shopping district. Lol, Lamau, say the deadbeat parents. <laughs> yeah. The time is just before midnight. In mere moments, it will be a new day. Whenever it rains at night, I end up checking the time. When I spent last year in Inaba, I was always checking for the Midnight Channel, which was a popular urban legend here in Inaba. It's a bad habit of mine, even when I'm not here. If you look at a turned off TV on a rainy night, you'll see your soulmate. Discovering that this rumor was actually true was the first reason I why I became involved in the murder investigation last year. The person who actually appears on the Midnight Channel isn't your soulmate, it's the next victim. Discovering this, we nervous all nervously sat before our TVs on rainy nights in order to solve the case. <laughs> that brings back some memories. Nothing will show anymore, though. Will nothing really appear, though? Ooh, I suddenly have doubts. Why would I think that? After we solved the case, we all confirmed that the Midnight Channel wasn't appearing anymore. The empty screen stays silent. So why? Just in case. 
just in case. Not going to turn on. There's no way. The more I think about it, the more I feel my resolve fading. I turn to the TV screen as if something is drawing me into it. The only thing I see is my reflection in the dark glass of the CRT television. Or so I thought. Rivals! They are... Friends! Yet powerful foes! Oh, the so desperate loud. fighting program amongst so high school loud. students! It's so loud, holy heck. It's so loud. A new legend is about to start! May the manliest of all men come on down! Nobody touches his precious Nanako, the sister complex kingpin of steel, Yu Narukami! It's only natural. Wage slave in the boonies by day, hero by night, Captain Rasultimo, Yosuke Hanamura! Everything that bores me has gotta oh go! My God. A spunky dragon with deadly legs, the carnivore who's discarded womanhood, Shie Satunaka! You need to eat more meat! Please escort me to the ring, my prince, the unconquerable Snow Black, Yukiko Amagi! I'll finish you in one strike! Blooming roses and bulging muscles, the blood-curdling beefcake emperor, Kanji Tatsumi! Deep into realms of romance, the body of a child, the brain of a genius, the 2000 IQ killjoy detective, Naoto Shirogane! Is this an army of idiots? Fight and survive towards the one throne waiting at the end! The P1 Grand Prix, where fierce fights will be fought. The battle begins tonight! Wow. <laughs> They're all checking it. They're all checking it, of course. Of course. I love all their little nicknames. Dun 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 dun. Sister Complex Kingpin of Steel? <laughs> I love it. Oh my god, the little nicknames. Was that me? Sister Complex Kingpin of Steel. I'm oppressed. There's so much wrong with that phrase, I don't know where to begin. No, I shouldn't th be thinking about that. Words aren't the problem here. I gotta make sure the TV isn't plugged in. That was the Midnight Channel. It's actually showing rather ridiculous. What it was showing was rather ridiculous. But thinking back, everything the Midnight Channel showed last year didn't make much sense either. I'm suddenly gripped by tension. The Midnight Channel appears again, I'll have to find out why. I pull out my cell phone and search for Yosuke's number. C-H. Hanamura Yosuke. Quickly hit the call button. Does everyone know about this? Is everyone aware that the Midnight Channel is still being broadcasted? Do they know that it's showing us? And that we've been give, given taglines that only can be described as uncharitable. Uh, hello, this is Yosuke. Yosuke? It's nothing. I just freaked out when you called all of a sudden. Yeah, that's it. What's up? Yeah, that's hey, it. When do you want to meet? I can tell what's going on just by the sound of his voice. Yosuke knows about what happened on the Midnight Channel just now and is trying to hide that from me. Considering I've been out of Inaba for a while, but he's trying to keep me from worrying about it. There's no need for him to be concerned about that. Then again, I can kind of understand how he feels. I am his friend, That's after all. That's not why I was calling. I saw the Midnight Channel. You saw it too, right? Uh-huh. You easily hear Yosuke panicking on the other side of the phone. Probably surprised that I saw the Midnight Channel when I shouldn't even be in, in Inaba right now. Must be thinking that the Midnight Channel is now appearing on national TV network. <sighs> Looks like Teddy didn't tell him, after all. Did Teddy not tell you? Since we're meeting up early tomorrow, I decided to come today. I figured you wouldn't think I could have seen it, so I gave you a call. Uh... I assumed you weren't here yet, so I didn't want to rely on you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you haven't changed. Oh, Yosuke. So how about it? You're not going to leave this be, are you, Captain Rosantamo? <laughs> you zero in on that part. Did you see how they called you a sister complex kingpin? <laughs> Mine's not that bad. He is not that bad. I mean, they know how real, like, uh, how uh, real it actually is. I tell you, that program's not the only strange thing lately. Teddy, Rise, and Kanji aren't here either. They disappeared. 
Uh, for a moment, I'm a loss. I'm at a loss for words. Not only has the Midnight Channel come back on, we've lost contact with three of our friends. We're bad feeling about this. I cannot believe that those two things are un are All unrelated. Right. We should get together tomorrow, like we planned. Yeah, at the Junes Food Court. Welcome back, partner. Ah, ah partner. Oh my God. Yosuke, shut up. Oh my God. I'm suddenly reminded that I haven't greeted Yosuke yet. Finally, feel the sense of worry fade a little, and I answered with it's a smile. Good to be here. No matter what has happened, our friends may be in danger. If that's so, then there's only one thing to do. Hmm? Think of things I have to do. Oh, right. Sorry to say, I forgot to pick up your souvenir. Hey, yo! Daddy Cosmo. <laughs> Hello. A souvenir? Don't even worry about it, man. You sure? I thought you were really looking forward to it. Those nurses. N nurses? I had a feeling he wouldn't get if I didn't f tell him flat out. It's rather hard to bring up, but oh well. Yeah, Teddy asked me to get it for you. He said you were crushed that they got burned. They got burned. <laughs> I'm pretty good, Kazuma. How are you, bro? Wait, this is all. I didn't know you were into nurses. Ah, ah, shut up! That's enough! Damn it, you're trying to wind me up, aren't you? Stay home, you jerk. <laughs> but I'm already here. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. At least it seems like he understands about a souvenir. In any case, my preparations have been made. Tomorrow I'll meet up with everyone to sort out whatever information we have on the situation. If we have to, we'll go back to that world. It'd be best if it was just all in our imaginations. But unfortunately, we know that the Midnight Channel wouldn't have appeared without a reason. I should make sure I'm ready for tomorrow and get some rest. Finally finished grinding that Prokhorovka event. Ah, oh, nice, nice. The place is lively as always. Look across the food cart on the Junez roof for the first time in a while. Even though there aren't many people in Inaba, this place is exceptionally crowded. Plus, uh, because it's Golden Week as well, I feel like it's busier than usual. I happened to run into Yosuke at the elevator as we briefly greet each other. Guys are weird like that. <laughs> Guys are so quirky, am I right? They're so weird. The closer we are, the more simple our interactions when we meet each other face to face. Two of us step out into the food court. We immediately find Yukiko and Chie. They wave back at us on past the playground area from the beach that they're sitting on. Bench. Bench that they're sitting Good on. To see you guys again. Welcome back! We missed you! The guest of honor is finally here! You're looking well. Welcome back. Um, should we Hug! Oh, he already knows about the Midnight Channel thing. He's actually the one who called me up about it. Oh, hey C. This has turned into a pretty thrown-together reunion, hasn't it? Yukiko! I miss you. I'm glad you came. We chat some more while we all sit down. Then Yosuke stands up and clears his throat loudly, probably waiting for the right moment to say something. He hasn't mentioned anything to me, but I can guess what he's about to say. We all look towards Yosuke. Well, it sucks that we can't hang out more before jumping into another mystery, but to celebrate our partner's return, I hereby reinstate the investigation team in mm -hmm. response to the Midnight Channel going back on the air last night. Oh, the team is back! The team is back! Let's go! Just hearing that name again gets me all fired up. Yeah, let's do this! A second go! Uh, I don't think the applause is necessary. Are we sure this isn't part of the actual game story? I thought this was just a character story. Why not? It's been two months since we last saw each other, after all. He and Yukiko started chuckling when, when I shrugged. And though Yosuke seems to be saddened at first, he still ends up laughing along as well. It's a relief to see that they're the same as always, but because of that, it makes me even more worried about the friends that aren't here right now. We can't start slacking off. We begin to sort through the information that we know about already. Let's get cracking. I mean, this is no laughing matter. No one's heard from Teddy, Kanji, or Rise. Just those three, right? Where's Naoto? Yeah. Oh, I got a hold of Naoto-kun, but I didn't tell her about this stuff. Oh. She told me she couldn't make it today because of her job, so I didn't want to worry her. Okay. She seemed pretty bummed that she couldn't be here, too. Yeah. If she has a reason for not being here, then and we can still contact her, then Naoto should be fine. That leaves Teddy, Rise, and Kanji. Not hearing back from after the entire day has passed isn't normal at all. The relationship 
between their sudden disappearances and the reappearance of the Midnight Channel at last night disturbs me. Um, one thing's been bothering me. The picture on the TV was very clear last night. Yeah. Going by the pattern from last year, it wouldn't be that clear until after the victim entered the TV. Yeah. Hey, isn't this the first time a big group of people was shown together? Plus, we're still here. Why us anyway? And what's up with those insulting conclusions? <laughs> yeah. He seems pretty angry about it. Most lo many of the locals know about the rumor of the Midnight Channel. In other words, this troubling broadcast has already been seen by who knows how many people. When I've been told the moment she ate, I tried to ask another student about the Midnight Channel, the other girl ran away with a look of fear on her face. It's no surprise that she would be angry. But in the what end... What bothers me most is Teddy. He was acting like the host of that show. Mm. Yeah, and we can't find him. This smells fishy. Mm-hmm. Then again... I doubt he would play a prank like this for no reason. I guess we'll just have to go inside the TV and find out what's going on. Yep, yep. That's right. Go inside the TV. Of everything, that was the element that shook our common sense the most out of everything we experienced last year. Actually, the murders in last year's events happened in another world inside the television. This world is filled with monsters called shadows that are born from people's hearts. You know, if you're playing this hecking game, wouldn't you have already played Persona 4? Like, I don't think we need the exposition about what Persona 4 is all about, but, you know, I appreciate it if you haven't played Persona 4 in like 10 years, <laughs> and this is the first time you're playing it, I guess. Because my friends and I gained Personas, the power to defeat these shadows, we were able to enter TV screens and fight them. stuck in there without Teddy to give us an exit? But even we as Persona users would find it extremely difficult to leave that world on our own. In order to come back, we need to the exit TV that our friend Teddy was capable of creating. Uh huh. Not so. I've had Teddy keep the exit TV out on that side. Ah. Look at you, all prepared. I mean, think about it. What if we were half asleep and fell into a TV when Teddy wasn't over there? Ah. Isn't that a scary thought? Okay. Like anyone would be that clumsy. Anyway, it sounds like it's safe for us to go investigate then. No matter what the reason, it's reassuring to know that we have the exit strategy ready for us. To be honest, I almost fell into it the first time it appeared in my room, after all. Yeah, there's no yeah. doubt that something's going on in there. Is everyone ready? We're all good to go. To tell the truth, I had a hunch that this was going to happen. Oh, really? Well, Shara looked from our attentions. All of them nod back. I can see seriousness in their eyes. Though there was a two-month gap since I saw them, they still continue to put their trust in me. A slight sense of pride as I stand b back up from the bench. The large screen TV in the electronics department is directly below the food court. That was the entrance we used, always used last year. Is the TV still there? Has no one bought it? Come on. All right. mm. 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 It's a holiday, so the store's full of people. I feel like things are picking up around town. Dunn's characters. Yeah. You know, it's been a while since last time. I'm a little nervous. Yeah, the subs are behind, though. Oh, wait! There are still people in this aisle! Hey, get ready! Huh? The customers are going away! Uh-huh. It's time. Mm -hmm. Let's go! Yeah! Go oh, heck! Whoa. Isn't this different from usual? Oh no! What do we do? What can we do? We can't stop now! Hey, Benedict! What's going on, gamer? Or chess, chesser, board gamer? <laughs> I hear a voice. The woman's voice. Sounds familiar to me. This voice is. Margaret. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Here we go. I don't sense that distinctive floating feeling that I usually have when I enter the TV world. When I concentrate, I realize that I must be sitting in a chair. When I open my eyes, I see vibrant blue. 
The Velvet Room. I visited this place an untold number of times last year. Once more in my dreams yesterday. I never thought I'd return to huh? this place. It's not a dream this time? What's going on? Didn't my contract end already? Igor usually sits front and center, is nowhere to be seen. The one to greet me is the woman with silver, silver hair, Margaret. Could this be a personal summoning then? It happened a few times last year too. Margaret smiles as she senses my suspicions. This room is tied to your fate. Nothing that occurs here is meaningless. Though you reached an end to one journey, you now find yourself here again. This shows that you will once again be faced mm -hmm. with a question. A question? And something really is going on? Another mystery has appeared, and we are about to be dragged into it again. Could that be what she means? From here on, what befalls you will upset your status quo. It is true that you've opened the door once already. But all things change. Nothing ever remains the same. Sadly, What yeah. you gained before will change over time as well. You will have to face them once again. Face them? Again? First thing that Margaret's words stir up in my mind is the sight of my friend's smiling faces. Is that going to change? No, that can't be true. And face them again? That's impossible. If I wake up and leave this room, I should still be with my friends. No need to jump to conclusions. Margaret appears to have anticipated my thoughts and smiles while narrowing her eyes. Show me how you will proceed down the path that awaits beyond the door you've opened. My vision wavers and the blue right before me vanishes quickly. Wait. I still need to know what you mean by those words. Bookmark. What the heck is this? Yeah, what the heck is this? Progress will not be saved. Uh, I just put a bookmark, didn't I? Right. I want to see where we are. That's what I thought. This isn't even the main story, is it? This isn't even the main story. This is just... Wait, no. That is story mode. It's the story of P4 Arena. But then what is episode P4? I'm so confused. The game has two games story modes. Then what's episode P4 then? Prologue? Hmm. I see. Okay, I think I get it. Okay. 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 Okay, so we're doing it right anyway. Yep, and of course it didn't save anything, didn't it? Skip. Skip. Episode P3 is the other half. Ah. Okay. And of course, it didn't hacking save. Yep. Yeah, but I thought I placed the bookmarks, but I guess I didn't. Okay, now we're back. Hold on. Now we're back. 
Okay. No, 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 no. No, 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 stop. Stop. Gosh dang it. I freaking skipped it, man. Okay. Where are we? Gosh dang it, I skipped it. Gosh dang it, man. This sucks. Sorry, fellas. Okay. Where am I? Yeah, that's what that's what you sounds like. Where did I uh, get thrown to when I left that blue room? The scenery so ex unexpected. I'm at a loss. This is a school. It's the music room of Yasugami High. I entered this school with my friends until recently. There's no mistaking it. We entered the TV together, so why am I here? No, that's not right. This is. No, wait. This has to be the TV world. The graffiti on the ground, the shoes placed at their some kind of ritual. The eerie, shining eyes of the portraits on the walls. The more carefully I look, the more I realize that this place is not the real Yasugami High. More of all, I sense no, no, sense no warmth from this place, like I always did from the students who would always come and go from here. This is a fake. Definitely not the school from I attended. What happened t to turn the world inside of the TV to this? On top of that, we entered a TV from our usual entrance, but ended up a completely different place. This has never ha happened before. <laughs> I also realize that my friends aren't with me either. Did we somehow get separated? I started to feel chills down my spine and looked around. Hello, sorry for the wait. Greetings, boys and girls of Yasugami. The P1 Grand Prix is about to begin. There's no need for manners or courtesy or anything today, so let's all hang out. Tell us how you really feel. There we go. What the? What the? I got my impressions down pat, didn't I? Is that you, Rize? You won Grand Prix. Is that you, Rize? Shout out questions, but she doesn't answer. To Rize Kujigawa, one of our friends from the investigation team that we couldn't contact. She does not hear me, or is she choosing not to respond? I ask myself this, I hear a different voice, voices echoing as well. I look around in surprise. These voices, it's not just one or two people. I see countless students staring at me from the hallways and the entrances, everywhere I run. General? What's going on? Why are there so many people inside the TV world? Before I can think of any answers, Rize makes another announcement. And as if on cue, the monitor in the music room turns on. What appeared on it was Teddy. He was wearing a strange hat and cape, just like he did on the Midnight Channel last night. First Rize and now Teddy? What are they doing? Again? It's the same bizarre tournament that was shown on the Midnight Channel. Then is R Teddy really going to be the one behind this insanity? Teddy, what's going on here? We came to look for you and Risei and- Ah! Always with the talking, Sensei! It's a- Oh. Surprise. Okay. If he's not sucking up to you, then we know something's wrong. Less talk and more fighting! With the next challenger- I have to very down. cool of you, Teddy. <laughs> More cutscene? He looks away and makes a dismissive gesture. Smoke suddenly bursts out from underneath me and robs me of my, any visibility. Is there someone behind, behind, beyond that white curtain? Eventually, my field of vision begins to clear. I keep my guard up, expecting anything. But who should appear but Yosuke? Though I hadn't expected to run into him like this, I'm really relieved to see that he's safe. But he did say something about a challenger just a moment ago. Recall that the P1 Grand Prix had appeared on the Midnight Channel looked a lot like some kind of fighting competition. Wait, am I supposed to fight Yosuke now? It's not funny at all. Right. They're expecting you and me to fight. <laughs> Looks like. Sheesh, what's Teddy thinking? <laughs> Starting that up already? 
<laughs> Come on, Teddy. This joke's gone on far enough, Teddy. We're not gonna play along with that. Mm-hmm. Look over at Yosuke, hoping that he would agree with me. But he doesn't appear interested in what I have oh, really? to say. I guess he should declare me the winner then. Yosuke? Yosuke? What? You don't plan on fighting, right? That means I win by default. That was not what I was expecting to hear. What's gotten into you, Yosuke? You have some reason to be talking like this? I can't figure out what's going on. Yosuke continued to speak in a carefree manner. He said something I could simply couldn't believe. Uh, is that okay with you? I mean, since Nanako-chan's here and all? Nanako's here? Wait, really? You haven't seen her? She's with Teddy. Bro, what? I can't be. I saw Nanako back at the house when I left this morning. Even then, Nanako can't enter the TV world on her own. But she's in this world? I can't believe it for a moment. But what if it's true? Just coming to this world can tire a person out very quickly. On top of that, if someone who can't use a persona comes here, it can become some sometimes be even Where fatal. Is she? Yosuke, where's Nanako? Oh, what's gotten into you, partner? No need to get hysterical. Why are you so calm about this? You know what happened to her last time she came yeah. here. Yeah. Nanako did come to this world once last year. It's not something any one of us could have wanted to happen. That was the start of a whole chain of events. Remembering them is heart-wrenching, even now. But why? No, even then it might be wrong for me to lash out at Yosuke for the way he's acting. Calm down, I need to think straight here. All Yosuke was saying is that he saw her with Teddy. Then Nanako was brought here by Teddy. If he's the leader of this- If- if he's the leader of this tournament- Yosuke, be straight with me. Are you sure Nanako is with Teddy? Uh, how should I know? If I had to guess, I'd say she's probably still with him. Man, are you alright? Are you that worried about Nanako-chan? It's no wonder people look at you funny. Thinking oh you have my a sister god. <laughs> the sense of wrongness that I've been feeling this whole time is getting even stronger. True, Yosuke may say some insensitive things, but mostly that's because he's reading too much into a situation and acts out over it. He's not the type of guy to enjoy making hurtful remarks like Yosuke, this. Yosuke, are you alright? Yeah, hold him by the shoulders and hold him close. Huh? What are you talking about? I should be the one saying that to you. She's not even your real sister. Oh. All that big bro stuff really <gasps> creeps me out. Oh my god, Yosuke. <laughs> Holy heck. Hmm. It was a while ago that I saw her. It's probably too late to save her now. Jesus Christ. You know how things went last year after all. You're insane, Yosuke. You're insane. You're actually insane. Yosuke. He's definitely not the Yosuke I know. Yosuke is my friend. He wouldn't be so callous as that. At least, I thought so up until now. He was the one who had faced the pain of losing someone he cared about when the murders first started last year. I can't hate him for accidentally mentioning someone who was dead, but the way he's acting, he's doing this on purpose. That only draw my sword and face draw Yosuke. Your You'll get your fight. What? Dude, what are you saying? You told me you let me win by default. To be honest, I'd be thinking that this Yosuke before me was some kind of fake. Even I wondered if something had happened to him when Yosuke's shadow had appeared again in this world. This wrongness that I kept sensing was nothing like that. It's probably the real Yosuke. The strangest I feel be because these words are coming out of his the mouth of someone I never thought would say them. So I don't know then if you're being controlled or if there's something else going on here. Either way, you must understand the best way to resolve the situation. There's no way to tell if what I'm saying is getting through to him at all. But I want to figure out what's going on. I'll just have to fall for this trap once. Sorry, but I'm gonna go all out. No <laughs> hard feelings. No hard feelings. Huh? All that talk, and you're gonna fight against your partner after all? Sometimes oh, it must be done. Let's hurry up and get this started. Ready? Oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready at all. I'm not ready at all. <laughs> Oh god, everything I've learned is exiting my head. Literally everything I've learned is exiting my head. <laughs> remember, Vampy. I remember! Can't I just keep hitting him? Oh my god! What is auto mode? 
Oh my god. I can't believe things are already happening. Dude. I just need two seconds to freaking think about things. Okay? You can't just go all out on me like that, Yosuke. Give me some seconds, please. Just keep button mashing! Just keep button mashing! Just keep button mashing! Yeah, auto combos, let's go! It, it. This must be painful if you actually know how this game works. Auto combo! Oh my god. Holy heck. I sometimes remember things. I try to do some combos, but it's just, it goes so fast goes by so fast. <laughs> Amazing, Sensei! Keep that up and zoom on ahead! Oh, God. Ahead? You're gonna continue with this? Teddy. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the surprise. If you want to find out, you'll have to get to me! Oh, great. I can't say why, but I think you should hurry! Wow. Monitor shuts off. Still haven't learned anything about Nanako. But he did seem to have been expecting me to ask about her. I don't want to think about it, but Nanako really may be here. When were the monitor turned off, the students began to leave like waves in the receding tide. No, they don't like students anymore. There's something inhuman just taking the shape of students. It's too focused on the fight to notice, but it seems their true forms were coming through. They look like silhouettes. Maybe shadows? Even so, I don't sense any hostility from them. Well, if they're not a threat and they're going away, there's no need to chase after them. Besides, there's something more important to do right now. Yosuke, are you alright? Yusuke, I think you mean Junpei Yori, ace defective. <laughs> Walk towards Yosuke, still collapse on the ground, and give him a hand to help him up. How? Couldn't you hold back a little? I seriously thought you were gonna kill me. The same went for you. I wouldn't have stood a chance if I held back on you. Yosuke grimaces in pain where he's as he stands. But it doesn't seem to have any suffered have suffered any severe injuries. It's good. I knew I wouldn't risk going easy on him, so I was a little worried that I actually hurt him. Once we get a good look at each other, Yosuke's demeanor suddenly changes. Anyway, that aside, shut up about the nurses already. It's not like that's the only thing I ever think about. Oh. So. Hmm. Was okay. Hold on. What's this about nurses? Harping on it the whole time. Oh, How can you stand there and right. constantly bash my taste in women with a straight face? Right, okay. That's okay. Got it. Got Is it. Is it such a crime to like nurses? Is it such a crime? Wait a second. I understand why he's suddenly angry, but he's not making any sense at all. I tell Yosuke to calm down as we go over what he thought had happened before the fight. We learned that our memories of what each of us had been saying didn't match up at all. For Yosuke, it seems that I'd been, well, teasing him about his taste in the women. Yosuke was so heated up over what I had supposedly said he went almost into he almost went into graphic detail, but I stopped him before things went too far. I mean, it's really the boast of, uh, best for both of us if we would pretend this never happened. But thanks to our conversation after the battle, I've come to realize something. We'd been hearing each other say things neither of us had been meaning to say. Yosuke, then let me ask you something. Is it true that Nanako is here in this world? She is. Yeah, he doesn't know. Yosuke is at a loss for words. He had no idea what I was talking about. It's just as I thought. Yosuke doesn't know anything about Nanako. That's true, the way I had heard Yosuke saying before the fight was something that Yosuke couldn't have possibly said. It only makes me more convinced that I have the right idea. What I heard wasn't Yosuke who had been meaning to say. I don't know how, but something else had been had made Yosuke say those words, even if he didn't know he was saying them. It reminds me, Teddy on the screen had said I needed to get to him if I wanted to find out the truth. Does that mean that Teddy has done this to us? I guess there's no choice but to keep going. 
Kanaka was good friends with Teddy. I want to imagine it happening, but if he wanted to kidnap her, it certainly would have been possible. It's certainly possible he could have. I want to go home at once to check to make sure she's okay, but I have no idea where I am. Even worse, Teddy holds the means of returning to the real world. No way out of here unless I find him on my own. Taking off? Yeah. Well, be careful. You're not gonna come with me? Bruh? Be careful. I'm worried about you. Do your best. There's a lot of emotion behind those words. Yes, I know I'm, that I'm hearing the real Yosuke. I take Yosuke's cheering me on to the heart, to heart, and I leave the music room. But he had only said that the winner could go on in this tournament. Ah. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's probably not a lie. Yosuke understands that as well. But he's trusting me to sort it all out and lets me go on without much talk. He's frustrated that he can't help me out. Could just be jumping to conclusions there. After all, Teddy did say that the, the, that was the rule, but we don't have any proof either way. <sighs> well, might as well see what he meant by that. Stop walking and turn back to Yosuke. Oh, one last thing about those nurses. Ah, quit it already! <laughs> oh my How god, you! Again? Yosuke turns bright red and rushes toward me, flailing wildly in an attempt to stop me from finishing. And. Yeah, okay. The painful sounding noise as he runs into something invisible and slowly slides to the floor. What is this? Huh. Well, there's an invisible wall. Looks like the loser can't leave the room. Hmm. Looks like there's some force that prevents the loser from leaving the area where the fight took place. Yes, you just said that. It's likely that every time one of these battles happens here, the winner will get sorted out this way. That's annoying. I see how it works now. Thanks. Teddy really has kidnapped Nanako, then there's no time to lose. Don't use me as your guinea pig. Wait, that's it? Hey, don't wear yourself out, alright? I turn away as Yosuke shouts at me. Not to worry, Yosuke. I gave him a quick smile before leaving the area for real this time. At that moment, I feel a wave of dis disorientation crash over me. This... Surprise that this is happening without worrying, but it's not a threat. After all, I know this feeling all too well. Oh? Oh. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Hello, Margaret. I've been leaving the music room, but now I'm sitting in the Velvet Room for some reason. Margaret greets me with her usual smile. This room is mysterious. <laughs> this room truly is mysterious. Why would she summon me like this? Margaret sees my suspicious expression and speaks Things up. Things have only just begun, and yet you already seem tired. The misfortune that has befallen you can be thought of as... A sort of trial. Hmm. Trial? I want to know the details behind her words, but I know she won't answer me even if I ask. Inhabitants of the Velvet Room never reveal anything. Never reveal everything. That's because they can only watch over the choices their guests make. Margaret's smile broadens as when she sees I don't intend to ask her anything. Indeed. I am an observer on your journey. I would do nothing so thoughtless as to force you to make choices. Mm. You do not need such provocations. I already know that you shine brilliantly enough. Aw, oh, thanks. The shine she speaks of. Would it be about my ability to use personas? Yes, that is part of your brilliance. Personas are masks of resolution, strengthened by controlling one's heart. By forming bonds. You understand mm. this well, don't you? Yeah, that's how we all fought up till now. Yes, indeed. But one's heart is intangible. It cannot be seen and cannot be felt. When polished, it releases a strong Your eyes are permanently closed now. <laughs> but it can it's, it's also because... be clouded by trivial things. Hold on. Have it's because uh, I look down at the text, right? And when I look down, my eyes close. <laughs> so I'm trying to look up. So I can't- I don't look at the words. So my eyes don't permanently close on me. Wait, I have an idea. I have an idea. Why are you looking down instead of forward? Because the text is downwards! That's why! Here. Let's try this. Okay, let's try this. That's not true! That may be true. 
That's not true. You truly are strong. I find that very appealing about you. But you should remember that not everyone is as strong as you. Hmm. Ricket's voice fades away as she answers me. From here on, you will be forced to re-examine the things you know as bonds. Oh? How will you face the changes to come, and what choices will you make? Probably none, because this is a visual novel. Oh my god, I love this song. Hold on, let me, uh... Out of all the songs in Persona 4, this one is my favorite. I wonder if you can hear it. I blend my eyes again, I'm in the school's hallway. I turn around to see the door to the music room close behind me. Why was I suddenly summoned to the velvet room in spirit? No way for me to figure out what just happened. I think back on what Margaret told me. The changes, huh? Even though the people of the velvet room avoid saying much, what little they have to they do have to say always has meaning. Well, it's true that Margaret has said some strange things while I've known her. She never said anything meaningless while on duty. I would assume that this would be the case now. I may have to keep her words to heart. Please bookmark! Boom. How many scenes are there, do you know? In any case, I need to concentrate on this case for now. I'm sure I'll understand the meaning behind what she said when the time comes. I must proceed. This bizarre place looks nothing like Yasugami High and I attended. The building seems strangely familiar as I run through it. Teddy has appeared on the monitor in the music room. From the looks of things, he appeared on to be behind what was happening. But I heard heard Rize's voice over the school's PA system before my fight with Yosuke. If this school works anything like a real one, I can make a good guess as to where Teddy and Rize are. Might be the announcement room. Hmm. Lowe's Juice Mix is the best version. I agree, I agree. That one is really good. But of course, things aren't that easy. The invisible walls keep getting in my way wherever I go. Seems like some of these walls don't let anybody through, no matter if they win or lost their fights. Every time I run into one, I'm forced to take another path. My route is already set for me. Railroading. Intense railroading. I feel like I'm being led somewhere. I stop for a moment in the hallway of the practice building and mutter to myself while I take a look around. Who is- no, where are they trying to lead me? That moment- Hey, you there! You're one of them participants in that their Grand Prix thing, right? Who? Voice I don't recognize at all breaks me from my revere. I suddenly- I instinctively jump back and draw my sword in surprise. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's the big idea? You could poke someone's eye out swinging that thing around. Who the heck is this? Yeah, I have no idea who this is. I didn't see a girl I've never seen before. Is she part of that crowd? No, she looks like a real person. I was caught by surprise when I suddenly pointed my weapon at her. As she flinches, her words don't lose any of their intensity. How bold of her. It may seem like an odd thing to say, but it's what suddenly crosses my mind. This girl doesn't seem to have any intention of attacking me. She had my sword, but remained cautious. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Sorry ain't gonna cut it. What were you gonna do if you hurt one of the students here, huh? You can't go pulling that stuff without student council approval. Student council? Oh. Uh. All right, the jig is up. I'm putting the kibosh on this tournament right now. Hey, wait, hold on a second. I'm not in this because I want to be. I'm trying to stop the tournament. I'm trying to act non-threatening, but the girl continues to glare at me. Who in the world is this girl? Brandy also got me high uniform. Said something about a student council. I don't recognize her. I don't encounter people here in the world that this world that often. If the person is here, then they're either Persona user or... Why are you or... here, by the way? Wait. Did you fall inside a TV? Right. May have put on a little... Uh, put it a little differently, but if she can't enter a TV herself, then the only possibility is someone threw her in. That was what was happening in the murders from last Who year. inside a TV? What kind of nonsense is that? What the heck? She's not aware of it. But if she was a Persona user, I don't she... Why'd she hide that fact? trying to keep that from me, then she wouldn't have come to talk to me like this. Then does that mean she's a victim after all? Carefully choose my words to avoid provoking the girl and introduce I'm myself. I'm Yu I was a second year at Yasugami High until last year. Huh? Last year? But that uniform... Oh no, this is... Uh, kind of my usual equipment when I'm in... Usual equipment. 
<laughs> Equipment? Uh, never mind. Uh, forget it. Well, if you were only around till last year, I ain't gonna blame you for not knowing. I'm the new student council uh... president. Nice meeting you. Student council president? I'm remembering correctly, the student council elections should have taken place just before the holidays. I have no knowledge who won any of those elections since I left Inaba before they took place. Reminds me, I didn't have any friends on the student council last year either. This girl may very well be the president. No reason not to believe now her. it's your turn to spill. You said you ain't in the tournament because you want to be. Then what are you doing here? And what's this tournament about in the first place? Uh, okay, yes, yeah, so she has no idea about anything. I feel if I don't explain things very clearly to her, it will only provoke her further. But trying to tell her everything about what's going on here will only confuse her. Think about the fact that this place inside the television and tell her about the other things that are going on. First, I tell her about Teddy, that a friend of mine is likely the one who set the tournament up. Second, that I encountered some of my friends who were dragged into this as well and they were acting strangely. And third, that is my cousin, Nanako, still in elementary school, maybe I've been dragged into this mess. The girl calling herself a student council president seems skeptical when I talk, but eventually she sighs. So if I got this right, you didn't start this, but your friend did. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you don't seem like you're lying. Seems like she somehow grasped the gist of what I was trying to say. I think her out of politeness, but she laughs and asks why I'm thanking her. There's still one more difficult task left at hand. How do I make her understand that this is all within another world, one asset access by going through a TV screen? Still appears to be energetic, but doesn't change the fact that she's in danger. I have to get her out of this world no matter what. Where did that sound come from? Well, let's go look. Hey! That <laughs> sounded like it came from the gym! I ought to tell you to go home, but I get that you're worried about your sis. Come on, let's go check it out. Hmm. We'll start running at the same time. Reach my full running speed when something occurs to me. I'm surprised to see Miss President keeping pace right behind me. It's just standing in this world would be strenuous for a normal person, but she doesn't even seem out of breath. She's quite impressive. Take a moment to quietly praise the girl running next to me. She has to be a Persona user. She has to be. Burst into the gym where all the noise came from, but there's no one here. Instead, we see huge piles of stacked chairs, twisted and intertwined everywhere on the open floor and on the gym, forming huge towers that reach almost to the ceiling. What is this? Don't go to all this trouble. The girl stares up at the chair, seeming dumbfounded. Suddenly, a monitor in the gym flickers to life. As expected, Teddy appears again in that costume. Oh, are you on a hot date, oh my god. Not saying anything completely straight, but he's obviously hinting that he knows I'm worried about Nanako. I know that saving Nanako is important, but I can't leave Miss President here alone and abandon her to this world either. You know, I feel Teddy's words causing me to doubt myself. And Miss President raises her voice. Hey! <laughs> she speaks as fast and clearly as when I first met her. After getting a clear look at her, I feel like I've come to realize where she gets her courage from. She truly wishes to protect this school. A strong awareness of her duty sur surpassing her fear. The Teddy on the monitor looks annoyed and sneers at Miss President. Incredibly detestable. I can't believe that Teddy can even make such a malice expression. Literal evil Teddy. Oh my god. Teddy! Sit, puppy. Sit. Sit, Teddy, stop! You absolutely no intent of dealing with her seriously. The president turns bright red in humiliation from being brushed off like that. This is enough. Take a step forward to put myself between the monitor and Miss President. Leave this to me. I'll take it from here. It's alright. There's nothing to worry about. Miss President's lips are trembling. She must be angry that there's nothing she can do herself. I don't want that anger to be in vain, so I turn to face Teddy on the that monitor. Pretty harsh, Teddy. Hard to believe a womanizer like you would say such things. Yeah. <laughs> What's so attractive about a shameless liar like her? Liar. Okay, so she does know, right? Liar. You know something about her? 
The way he said to me sounds like there's some history between the two of them. But as usual, he doesn't bother to give any details about his answer. Oh, jeez. After that line, another smoke of a cloud of smoke rises from the floor. But this time, it is Yukio, Yukiko who appears. Oh, thank goodness you're safe. What's the matter? It's uh, nothing. Are you alright? Has anything odd happened to you? Odd? No, I, I don't think so. They're gonna start fighting, though, aren't they? Yukiko seems alarmed to see me in a defensive posture. But my shoulders relax in relief as I shift my weight to stand normally. It seems that she hasn't been affected like Yosuke had. I don't think I'd been that tense, though. Now that it's Yukio, I remember. She's as sharp as always, exactly when we need her. She's not being confused, and I can immediately ask for her help. I try to explain what I need Nanako from her. might be in here. I'm heading to the announcement room where Teddy is. I need you to protect this girl for me. She might be a victim of all this. I mentioned motion towards Miss President standing next to me. Yukio looks at me in surprise. I don't blame her, though. But what Yukio said next is even more surprising. Why do I have to do that? Not like I know her or anything. Ah, uh, here we go. I'm not gonna help her because I don't know her. Is that really what she's saying? I can understand that she might be cautious when meeting someone for the first time, but you could really think that way? It's gotta be the same thing as with Yosuke. The same uncanny sense of wrongness is coming back to me when I hear Yukiko speak. Yukiko, not you too. Calm down and listen to me. Can you understand what I'm saying? I can only imagine what he's saying to her in her mind. What are you saying all of a sudden? I can hear you clearly. What did you mean by you too? I try to question her. Yukio's expression returns to normal. I can't tell anymore. It doesn't look like she's being controlled by someone. Am I overthinking this too much? At the very least, she doesn't seem enthusiastic about this P1 Grand this Prix. This is probably a trick the enemy is playing on us. They're trying to get us to fight each other. Mm -hmm. I'll say it one more time, Yukiko. I'd like you to protect this girl for me. Sorry, but um, I don't know how to put this. It just feels like you're being really selfish. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well. You always help people who have nothing to do with you. And I admire that. But where does that leave us? It's always your friends who get put in danger because of your self-centeredness. Wow. I'm used to hearing her voice, but her words are scathing. I'm convinced now. There's no obvious change in her attitude like it has been with Yosuke, but something must be warping Yuko's words too. Her words see may seem like a sound argument, but she means something else. I don't care if someone who isn't related to me gets hurt. It's definitely not something Yukio would say. Real Yukio would never say something that disrespects the value of a life that way. Don't be deluded. Whatever happens to Yosuke is happening to Yukio too. I understand the details, but Yukio hadn't hadn't had a complete change Yukiko. of heart. What the Yuka? I draw my sword, Miss President tries to stop me. I can't answer her right now. If the battle will clear up this pointless misunderstanding between us, then the time to fight is now. Ooh, now that's our senpai! Ah, no here we go. No mercy. Not even to a girl if it's for your own goals. You're a real bastard with a sister. Wow. Complex. Keep it up and bring them all down. I ignore the taunts being delivered in Rize's voice. What if our words aren't getting through to each other and we have to fight without understanding what's going on? Come to an understanding later. I have to believe. Both myself and my friends. I hold my sword to the side to protect Miss President, who's standing behind me. Sorry, but you need to stay back. Whatever you see here, try to stay calm. Promise me you won't run away. Whatever happens next will probably surprise her greatly, but I doubt Miss President will run away. She's already shown me how strong her determination is. I glance over at her over my shoulder. Although she looks worried, she still gives me a slight nod of agreement. Now, time to do this. Let's end this as quickly as possible. Persona. Concentrate all my ses uh, senses to summon my strength of heart, my persona, Izanagi. If I allow myself to go easy on Yukio, she will surely defeat me. Yukio smiles faintly and takes on her battle stance. She resisted the idea of protecting Miss President, but she seems to have no qualms whatsoever about fighting me. There's definitely something else controlling her. Yukio's black hair forms graceful arcs in the air as her persona, Konoha Nesakuya, raises behind her. That's right, the usual Yukiko should have, been beautiful, should have a beautiful heart like this. Wait for me. I will save you. I will save you!
Seems like every three scenes there's a fight. Seems like. Let's see if I can just do the freaking auto attacks again. Lord have mercy. Yeah, just the auto attacks. Let's go. I can't freaking do anything, man. Remember to block. Uh, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't go all the way back because then bad things will happen, right? Hey, oh, this is easy, right? Easy. Thank you for the follow, Alec Marshall. Thank you, thank you. Place a bookmark. Yes. The winner is you, Sentai. <laughs> what an utter thrashing! <laughs> I love all this animosity. Ha! Ah, I get it. <laughs> No. No, that's not it. I don't care to hear any more of Teddy's jests. I still have reservations about fighting against my friends, but I now know that there's no other way to save them. I'm resolved to do what must be done. There's no knowing if Teddy and Rize have been affected just like Yosuke and Yukiko had. If they are, then there's no use in trying to talk to them through the monitor like this. The conclusion I've come to, but Miss President seems to have other ideas. How much further are you gonna push this? Miss President vents her frustration at Teddy's image on the monitor. I was a bit surprised about how she worded it. She seemed more upset that he was making friends fight each other, not on why she had dragged her the entire school into this mess. We only just met, but she clearly emphasizes with, empathizes with us and understands the pain that we're going through. I'm embarrassed, but proud at the same time. A girl with such compassion would be a great student council president. No wonder she was elected to represent the student body of Yasugami High. It's alright. Thanks, though. Still worked up and she lashes out at me. Perhaps her heart is a little too honest. Her anger sets my mind at ease. He's right. What General Teddy do is doing right now cannot be forgiven. Glare at the monitor. Sorry, but you're not getting your wish. What? Did you think this would be all it took to break us apart? That it would make us hate each other? Sorry to say, but that's a huge mistake on your mm -hmm. part. I believe in my friends. They'll never get taken in like that. I'm warning oh, you now. Uh... If you really are Teddy, then we'll get you back to normal no matter what it takes. Even if it costs us our lives. But if you're an imposter hiding behind Teddy's face, I will make you pay for toying with us. Yeah. <laughs> make him pay. Teddy scoffs and turns around. The monitor suddenly switches off. Suddenly turning on us without any signs of remorse. That's not like Teddy at all. No, he's most likely not the real Teddy. Seeing the anger on his face only strengthens my suspicions. Someone must be taking Teddy's form to make it look like he's the one committing these acts. Um, that girl's come around. I immediately rush to Yukiko's side. I'm sorry. Yukiko, are you alright? I'm sorry I couldn't go easy on you. No, it's okay. You weren't your usual self, but I could tell by your eyes that there was something mm, going on. Good, good, good. I'm sorry too. Did I hurt you? Kinda, yeah. I sure wouldn't want to get into it with you again. <laughs> Try to pass it off as a joke, but we look at each other and laugh. Things are going the same way as they had with Yosuke. Coming clear hey, now. Did I say things that offended you earlier? Um, yes. I think you did. 
<laughs> Vampy almost lost. No, Vampy doesn't lose. Vampy doesn't lose. Yuko hesitates as if even remembering it is a difficult experience. What in the world did my illusion say to her? But it was something horrible. I was doing this is certainly finding the most annoying way of getting us to fight. What I supposedly said to her doesn't matter. Yukiko is still hesitant to bring it up, so I tell her not to worry about it. I don't it. need to know what I said. I just wanted to see if my guess was right. It looks like our enemy has the power to confuse our senses. My yeah. first opponent was Yosuke, and he told me a similar story after we fought. Huh? You said something bad to Yosuke-kun too? <laughs> what did you tell him? Oh, I wonder. Are you sure you want to know? I'm the only one admitting to what happened. That's not fair, is it? But that curiosity is in line with Yukio, I know. I fade the issue with a smile and call out to Miss President, who's standing behind us. What kind of people are you? Hmm? Oh, right. We used our personas. Yeah, we should at least explain to her what's going on. She did see everything that just happened. This would be a good opportunity to tell her everything. I introduced Miss President and Yukio to each other and fill in the parts that I had left out my previous explanation. Tell her about the personas. Tell her that we're actually a world inside of a television. And I tell her how the scenery here changes according to the hearts of the people who enter it. Looks doubtful when I'm talking, but considering she's just seen our personas only moments ago, she doesn't immediately deny it. Still, it seems like she can't accept it at all either. Cross her arms as if lost in thought. On the other hand, it seems that Yukiko didn't know that Yasugami High had a new student council president either. Yuko apologizes for not having paid attention to the elections in April. And that's it in a nutshell. So, that's what you meant by falling into a TV. Yes. Yeah, which makes me believe this school could be a part of your mind that's materialized. This school came from me? Oh, that's a lot to okay, yeah. She's the only one that doesn't really know about it, and she got- okay. I'm not surprised. Why is it different this time around, I though? see. Usually the victim's shadow appears first. Right, I had doubts about that too. There's a reason why it's dangerous for people who can't use their personas to enter this world. Besides the obvious reasons, such as not being able to escape and being unable to protect themselves from shadows, the person shadows separates from them. Shadows that split off strongly attached to their original people they came from and will try to harm them in order to become independent entities. I hadn't given it much thought since Miss President seems so energetic, but it's, it, but it's still possible this has happened to her as well. Put this together with the conversation I had with Teddy a moment ago, and I came to a conclusion. Teddy was hosting this tournament. What if he's actually this girl's shadow? Oh. Huh? I noticed he got agitated when I called him an imposter. A fake Teddy would mean he's someone else using Teddy's form. Right. I see. If this place reflects this president's heart, her shadow must be here. And right now, the strongest candidate is. Okay, that's right. We both saw an illusion, at the very least, the enemy has the power to delude our senses, make us see and hear things that aren't there. On top of that, it can alter what others hear us say and see us do. If it can do that, then I can clearly see that our, our easily see that our enemy can use that power to change its appearance. That means it could be impersonating Teddy and leading this tournament. It still leaves out the question as to why it would take on the appearance of someone it doesn't know. I've seen shadows in the past that took on bizarre appearances, but this is the first time I've seen one impersonating an existing person. Is this shadow some kind of objective? When I come into my senses, I see that Miss President has turned pale and is starting staring down at the ground. All this talk about shadows in another world doesn't seem to be reaching her, but it seems she seems troubled at the thought that she might be causing all this trouble. I'm about to tell her the actions of her shadow aren't her fault. Miss President rises I'm to her feet. Check out the announcement room. Oh. Teddy's behind the whole shebang, right? And if he came from me, then I gotta own up to the responsibility. A mm. student body president, I can't let this go. Okay. Oh, wait, you're being reckless. We'll take care of the shadow. You need to what? Get out of this TV world? And how am I supposed to do that? Go on. Show me the door. <laughs> well. Eyes are filled with the fires of determination, just so they has just as they had when I first met her. Our sense of responsibility and our awareness of her duties say that she will never back down. In the announcement room. And you're gonna go save her, right? Mm -hmm. I might not be as strong as the two of you, but I'm no slouch in a fight. Wouldn't it be better if we went together? No, don't you understand? This world is dangerous. I know it's dangerous, <laughs> but there's gotta be something only I can do to help. Hell, that aside, I can't leave after causing so much trouble. 
Making friends fight each other. It's not your fault, though. I'm going on ahead. You don't want to waste time arguing, yeah? Oh well, yeah, she can freely walk between the places as well, can't she? This president declares this in a voice that brooks no argument and takes off running. Yikes, I wasn't expecting her to behave rashly like this. I remember how fast she can run. I'm going after her, I need to go up once or I'll lose her. Please, you have to go after her. Nico sees me hesitate and knows exactly what to say. She's right. She's, there's so much we don't understand. There's no way the investigation team can let a victim run off to die. Yuko ignores the fact that I'd be leaving her here alone and tells me to follow the girl she's only just met. The exact opposite of the behavior she's been displaying before this fight. Now the, that is the Yukio Magi I know. I'm ashamed that I even slightly let myself be confused by the way I'd let heard her speak before, and I answer her. I'll come back for you no matter what. I believe in you. Yukio nods to me and I turn and begin running as fast as I can. I rely on the faint echoes of the footsteps ahead to pursue Mrs. President through the school. I can't use many memories of the school in order to navigate, because the invisible walls are everywhere, but the announcement room is upstairs. That obviously limits the path she can take. I will catch up with her no matter what. Oh? I've been running after Miss President for a while, and I still can't catch sight of her. So fast, it's almost, su it's almost supernatural. I begin to think that, that her path may not be hindered by the invisible walls. Wait a second. Now that I think about it, she's not participating participant in the P1 Grand Prix. Didn't appear in the introdu introduction video, even though she had been here when I faced off with Yukio. She wasn't affected by the rules. Would she be able to walk through these walls? So then catching up to her will be quite difficult. As I'm thinking this, suddenly a blue door appears in my path. I've seen this before. This is the entrance to the Velvet Room. I don't have time to deal with this, or so I think. Then I consider the timing of its appearance, and I can't help but feel there must be a reason for it. I make up my mind and reach for the door. As I walk through the door, I feel a slight sense of lightheadedness and close my eyes reflexively. I open my eyes, I'm seated in my usual, usual position. Margaret is smiling quietly at me, as if nothing is different. She sees that I've noticed her. She speaks, as if aware of my impatience. <laughs> you seem flustered, but time has no meaning here. Time is of the essence! Margaret points out politely. Politely points this out, knowing that I'm in a hurry. Time is meaningless, huh? Thought I'd figured out a few things about this room, but it seems that there's still more for me to learn about. If time doesn't pass while I'm in this room, then I should concentrate on what she's about to tell me. Once again, as if reading my thoughts, Margaret it smiles. It seems you've emerged victorious and have come away with a piece of the truth. Mm -hmm. Though you are in a garden of deceit, you have the vision to go forward. Very is that student council president's shadow really the cause of all this then? Who can say? Who can all say? Yeah, you, you don't know enough then. Closer to the truth. There is one thing I can tell you. Margaret's golden eyes are fixed if on mine. that girl's shadow is the cause of this misfortune, she will face her trial. Mm. But it's separate from your fate. Yeah. You have your own trial to overcome. Keep that to heart. My own trial. I don't mean to, but I repeat what Margaret had just Everyone said. Everyone sees various things in you that draw them to you. Salvation. Hope. I myself find fascination in watching over you. <laughs> Fate may not be the author of your trials, but you are destined to be tested. <laughs> Margaret smiles mischievously and nods towards me. What is the- what is the point of that? She has to come here and just show- say, like, No, okay. Okay, so maybe it was the point of saying, hey, she is separate from you. And then that's it. That, that's the extent of what she said. Another slight feeling of lightheadedness passes, and I return to the otherworldly school. The blue door is nowhere to be found, as if it had never been there to begin with. I look up. I don't understand what my own child is supposed to be. But for some reason, my mind is cleared up a bit. Good work! Where are we going to fight next, though? In any case, I need to keep chasing after Miss President. And now I immediately see a recognizable feature. Her long ponytail. I found her! Wait! It's too dangerous to go alone! Miss President turns around in response to my voice. Smiling. I wasn't expecting that at all. Tell me impressed that you managed to catch up to me so quick. This calmness. 
She expected I would follow her? She didn't even feel like she's toying with me. I understand her now. Nothing I can say to her would change her mind. No helping it then. Promise me that you won't leave my side. And you can't do anything rash. If you can't agree to those terms, I'll have to force you into protective custody. <laughs> this is a matter of life and death for you. Sure thing. Then let's get to that announcement room together. I thought I'd be able to keep her in check by saying that her life is in danger, but she didn't seem to take any notice. She just struggled and ex shrugged and accepted my proposal. Ah, <sighs> she's quite hard to deal with. Not sure if she knows how I'm feeling, but she speaks hey, up. Mind if I ask you something? What is it? Moment of silence. This is about to ask her to go on. Miss President continues. It's tough, being forced to fight your friends, huh? <sighs> yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. You don't gotta answer. I'll still be thinking about my fight with Yukiko. True, I'm slightly hesitant to talk about any of this, but it's a question that must be answered. How it feels to me. No, you're right. If I could avoid it, I would. But I believe in my friends. I you believe mean, in them. Friends won't hate you after the fight, or you think they'll understand that you don't really want to fight? I don't know. Both, maybe. I mean, there's no way we'd fight each other without some kind of reason. Yeah. Uh. Will she believe that answer? Study Miss President's face. When she opens her mouth, she has an unexpected gloomy look in her what eyes. If you had to kill each other. No, don't even don't even mention that, bro. Kill each other. Really hadn't anticipated that question. Caught off guard by how I hadn't even considered it. It's true, there's no guarantee that this General Teddy won't suddenly decide to make his fight to the death on a whim. Sorry, that was probably over the line. I don't know why I said that. I wouldn't let it happen. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't let it happen. If I was forced into such a situation, I would never follow that order. That's all I can say right now. After hearing my answer, Miss President casts her eyes down again. After seeing that behavior, I... How do I put this? I felt a sense of incongruity. Why would that be? Something doesn't feel like her. Could Miss President be carrying some imaginable burden that has yet to confide in us? Is it so heavy that she would ask that question of me? Speaking of which, if Miss General Teddy doesn't turn out to be her shadow, what does that mean about whatever repressed thoughts she truly has? Suddenly, it seems like her courageous and cheerful demeanor on a, a mirrored image of that, and a slight sense of fear chills my spine. My thoughts race through my head while we walk down the hallway. <coughs> oh, great. What are you doing? Ugh, I thought I broke my nose for a moment. It's that invisible wall again. Even though I should have been expecting them, I re relaxed my guard and walked straight into one. Hold my nose and wave at Miss President. It looks concerned. There's an invisible wall. I don't think I can go through here. An invisible wall? Oh. That <laughs> must have been why you broke out of the Mime Act every now and then. Mime Act? Well, if I can pass through, it must only be blocking the tournament fighters. Yeah. This world sure is out there. Miss President walks straight, but straight through the place I bumped into, so that must be the case. As I'd imagine, Miss President is unaffected by these walls. Is it because she's not one of the fighters in the Grand Prix? Of course, if General Teddy really is her shadow, maybe the normal rules don't apply to her. The entrance of the school building is ahead of us. But perhaps the worst of all is that the room- the wall I just walked into is blocking me from reaching there. I'll have to find some other way. No, there's walls here too. And the same can be said for the other direction towards the entrance. What crosses my mind as I check the back way we had come? As I thought, another invisible wall is formed where I just passed and I can't go back. The walls in every direction, there's nowhere I can go. Trapped. If I can't go anywhere, this can only mean one Be thing. Careful. This probably means. The moment I call out to Miss President, General Teddy appears on the monitor in the entryway. It means my third round in the P1 Grand Prix is about to begin. Is it Kanji or Naoto? <laughs> You're still using Wow. It's getting old. Why don't you just show your true self? Boy, you got peevish. I don't have any idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't think it's uh her shadow. I was intentionally trying to rile him up, but he wasn't falling for it. Looks like I'm not going to get him to reveal anything that way. Quickly change okay. tactics. So who's my next opponent? Ooh, now you're getting into the spirit of things. Let me guess. You're starting to enjoy beating up your friends. <laughs> Sure, no. <laughs> okay, with the next challenger, come on down.
Naoto or Kanji? The general doesn't pick on my attention and ye loudly yells out well, what appears to be his pre-battle catchphrase. Smoke pours out. Who would appear from the smoke but the person I was expecting to see? Four of us entered the TV together. We've already fought against Yosuke and Yukiko. Then, Chie. Ah. Uh... That's what I thought. They're the last of us, after all. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a feeling you'd be next too. She laughs along with me. For a moment, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with her words and actions, but I can't let my guard down around her. For all, I felt the same way when I encountered Yukiko too. But as they say, third time's the charm. I have to see if Chie is in her right mind. Like the best way to do that is to be calm and start a conversation with Chie, her. You know what they're doing, right? Or I can begin to explain. Chie cuts me off. Yeah, I know. The stuff we say gets twisted around, so we end up fighting each other, right? Right. But don't worry. You're the son of a bitch who left us as soon as the last Oh my ended, god. But you're still our good friend. <laughs> Chie. <laughs> Oh my god, best girl lose on purpose? I don't think so. Maybe when Naoto comes along, I'll lose on purpose, but. Nah, nah, nah. I mean, you have it easy. You're just fighting your friends. Oh yeah, so easy. So, over and over, all because of you humans! What are you even talking about? Now, this is obvious. She is clearly not herself. So blatant, her words don't offend me at all. Moreover, it's not just out of character, but she would never say anything like that. And you humans? That's as good as confessing you're not human. Oh right. Carnivore, was it? The president is always watching us from nearby. He looks a lot more dumbfounded than worried. Still. What she said at the end caught my attention. I had to keep killing over and over. More stuff about killing, huh? This president was talking about it earlier, too. This must be. It hurts. It hurts. What is going on? What happened to her? I'm not even trying to sound like Chie anymore. I begin to understand what she's talking about. The shadow is intentionally making people say these things. What does this mean about Miss President? Killing each other? All because of humans? What kind of secret past could the new student council president of Yasugami High be harboring? No, now's not the time for this. I'll have to look into this after we've cleared up all the confusion between us. Is... Okay, student council president. I don't think she's actually student council president. I think she's probably a shadow. I think. Let's do this, Chie. I ignore her words and draw my sword. Immediately, Rize's voice echoes through the area as if she's waiting for this. Well, well, round three of the P1 Grand Prix already. Word on the street is that the carnivore may have a slight advantage. The carnivore. Will you, senpai, all talk and no skill. Managed to eke out a win this time? Let's get Maybe. this show on the road. Ready? Okay, okay. 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Gonna be easy peasy again, right? Finally. I freaking love the little pixel things, they're so cute. Auto-combo! Auto-combo! I don't even know how to counter. I'm glad that she's not doing that because I don't even know how to counter it. Oh god. Okay, I got it. Got it. <sighs> Even the game knows he didn't complete the tutorial. <laughs> How would it possibly know? How would it possibly know that? I 
These aren't too bad. If the story continues to be like this, then I think I'll do pretty okay. And that's all that matters, right? Not like I'm going against people. Yet. So, you know. I've won! I lower my sword and begin to slowing begin slowing my breathing. I don't believe I've injured Chie too badly. I mean, this is my third time I've had to do this. I feel like I'm getting pretty good at not having to seriously wound people in a fight. Wipe that smug look off your face. This isn't fun at all! Is it not? General Teddy has seen the fight's ending without any injuries and spits his words through the monitor. The image on his monitor then disappears without anything further. Let him say whatever he wants. I fought all the friends I came into the TV with and none of them are hurt. All that's left is to head to the announcement room and make sure Nanako is safe and then we'll be able to go home. Walk over to Chie and help her off the ground. She's come back to her senses and she seems a little sheepish. Man, you were no challenge at all. <laughs> That's so savage. I kind of wanted to say it though. Are you all right? Man, you were no challenge at all. Hey, that's me. <laughs> I had to. But you almost died. Almost. That's the key word. I didn't. That means I win. Man, you are strong though. I'm kind of shocked at how much of a difference there is between. Look who's talking. I've never been kicked around so badly in my life. I wait for Chia to reach her feet and then I tell her everything that's happened up to this point. The others are safe too? Oh, what a relief. I was pretty worried. She's so relieved that she sits down on the floor once more. You know, but smile at that reaction. She really does care about her friends. Well, of course she does. Yeah, these are the people I believe in. Seeing us exchange smiles like nothing is wrong. The president sounds perplexed when she speaks up. really are tight, aren't you? Makes me jealous. Well, we did spend a whole lot of time together last year because of that case. Sure, I was surprised to hear such weird stuff coming from him, but I know he'd never say any of that to me. Exactly. Wait a sec. Who are you? I like <laughs> how Chie and Yukiko knew that it wasn't you talking. Like, oh, I knew that you'd never say such stuff to me, but Yosuke fully believed it. <laughs> Yosuke was like, oh, bro. How could you say such things to me? Oh my god. Oh, I forgot about that. Quickly introduce Miss President, tell Chie that she may be a victim of this case. But Chie looks again at Miss President suspiciously. Huh? The student council president? Y you mean ours? That doesn't seem right. I remember the new president being a guy. See? This is what I was talking about. What are you saying? I'm the student council president. Who else would I be? I'm pretty sure, though. Yeah, that's what Maybe I thought. Maybe if you told me your name, I'd remember. My name... Miss President stops moving. What's going on? She can't tell us her name? Not a strange question, is it? But for some reason, Miss President seems unable to answer. Since it was kind of incoherent melancholy from her. She and I share a tense I... glare. My name's... What's wrong? My... Memories... No. I don't want to fight anymore. Why do we have to kill one another? Kill one another. I gasp when I hear the words fall from her mouth. I don't know what's crossing her mind right now, but she's definitely not acting normally. I glance at Chie and then try to approach Miss President in hopes of calming her down. <laughs> oh. oh, heck. <laughs> Without warning, Miss President begins flailing her arms as I try to ward off- as if trying to ward off demons only she can see. He reaches out and touches her in concern. His president's arm catches Chie and easily knocks her aside. Chie. What power! I barely managed to catch Chie before she slams into the concrete wall. Still, the sudden breakdown. What in the world's happened to Miss President? As I've helped Chie back to her feet, we carefully approach her from both sides. It'll be a little rough, but it can't be helped. We can't ask her anything while she's like this. But at the moment... What? Before I know it, Miss President is flying through the air. She was jumping. For a moment, I can't comprehend what I'm seeing. This is no ordinary leap. She was at a standstill, but now her entire body is suddenly up higher than my head. Her jumping ability is unbelievable. She and I look up in astonishment as Miss President kicks off the ceiling and changes directions and lands in a full run. Wow. Who is that girl? Yeah, definitely a shadow. Did I say something to offend her? She did mention something about her memory. 
Come to think of it, her memories did seem a little muddled. Mm. Maybe she was on the verge of getting them back. What kind of memory would make her go nuts and run away like that? Can't answer Chia at all. What if you had to kill each other? There was President's sad voice in my head. She apparently wasn't expecting me to answer her, and she I'll continues. Make sure you rescue her, okay? Her voice is strong and confident. The point to drive the point home, she pokes her my chest with her finger as if ordering me. Even though she might be in danger herself, she's still worrying about others. All my friends are like that. That really makes me happy right now. I ask Chi if she'll be alright on her own. She fires back. Let me worry about that. I nod to her and begin running after Miss President once more. I will save her, no matter what. <laughs> Next two characters to fight are the cool Z. Coolest. <laughs> Even though I was running as fast as I could, the invisible walls kept preventing me from making much headway. I attempted to strike the walls with my persona, but nothing happened. So many invisible walls, one after another. Miss President can pass through them. I don't know if I can keep up the pursuit. The announcement room is still my destination. No way to know if that's where Miss President is headed as well, but if there is a shadow waiting for me there, I need to get there anyway. Eddie and Rize should be in the announcement room, and if Nanako is being held captive, that's where she'd be as well. I have to keep running, but yet another wall blocks the hallway. First, I think that it's a dead end. I realize I can cut through a classroom and come out on the other side of the wall. It's forcing me to enter the room rather than letting me go straight, which probably means I brace myself and put my hand on the door. The moment I step inside, a familiar voice echoes in my mind. Senpai! Senpai! Can you hear me? Please answer me! Senpai! Rise? That voice. Is that you, Rise? The real one? The voice isn't coming from the PA system. I'm actually hearing it in my head. It has to be the work of Rise's persona. Teddy captured me, and then you were all fighting each other. I can hear the relief in her voice. It sounds so different from the insensitive and rude voice that had been coming from the PA system. This is indeed the Rise I know. Where are you now, Rise? Can you locate where I am? I'm sorry, I don't think there's time. I'm stuck in the announcement room. Ah, uh, okay. Please, Senpai, you have to hurry. If you don't, he'll... Ah! Rise! What's wrong, Rise? Oh, heck. There's no answer. Communication has been cut off. Something happened in the announcement room? My heart begins racing. The enemy has made us fight each other's participants in this tournament. They had captured Rize as well. It's clear to me they must be worried about her using her persona's powers to tell us the truth. That's not important. Uh, not important right now. If she was just captured to prevent her from contacting us, then the enemy must think of Rize as being less valuable than those who had, who had to fight. It sounded okay, but who knows what might happen to her now. I have to Pardon hurry. Me for interrupting while you are lost in thought. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I know that voice. I know that hecking voice. <laughs> Robot emoji. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Hand brushes my shoulder. Surprise, I jump away and draw my sword. I can't believe I let myself get so lost in thought I didn't realize, didn't notice someone until they touched me. This is the second time I've let myself get so distracted. I've gotten so used to having my friends with me while I investigated last year. I can't pay attention to the entire world on my own. I need to brace myself. Look up and see another unfamiliar face. A girl with blonde hair and striking blue eyes. Wait, a girl? Her face and voice seem human-like, but the rest of her is metal everywhere, all over her body. For a moment, I wonder if this is just an elaborate costume, but I can see the interior framework of her body, where her joints connect. I didn't mean to startle you. Oh! Oh, you! Oh my god. You're... um... It's nice to meet you. My name is Igis. And no, I am not human. Oh, Igis. You are the one from the introduction video, listed as... The Sister Complex Kingpin of Steel, Narukami-san. Correct? The question catches me off guard. I wasn't expecting a complete stranger to call me that. And did she say she wasn't human? It's well, when Yosuke called me by that stupid title, I knew it was a joke, but when a stranger says it, it sounds like they truly believe it. <laughs> this is a pain. <sighs> Nanako is important to me, but calling it a complex is stretching things. 
No, wait a second. I was trying to play it off, but I ended up blurting out Nanako's name anyway. Calm down. I need to take this conversation away from the subject. Clear my throat and try to start Aigasan, over. Was it? Why are you here? Our primary objective is the destruction of shadows. But we have come to this world on a different mission. The destruction of shadows? Does she fight shadows? How can she do that if- Does that mean- Yes. I have a persona as well. Though my body is a machine, personas are the strength of the mm -hmm, heart after mm -hmm. all. Just as I thought. Surprised to find another persona user outside my group of friends, and a robot on top of that. I can't come to grips with all this. From the way we were talking, she seems just like a normal person, only an interesting only in, in, in an interesting suit. True, I've seen stories on the news about robots looking uncannily like humans, but it isn't something like this before, far beyond those. Still, I can't but believe the evidence of my own eyes. I mean, I've been hopping in and out of TVs for the past year. Who am I to say what's strange or not? Perhaps the technology behind her creation that has supernatural roots of its own. I find myself growing more and more interested in how she came to be here, but I have to put that aside for now. There's something I need to find out from her first. He won Grand Prix. So similar to the events of last year, but to think that it would involve someone like her. I don't have a clear picture of everything that's happening, that's for sure. I calm myself, then ask her what uh, what I would feel what I feel would tell me what she's doing in this and world. What is this mission of yours? She opens her mouth to respond, but just then monitor inside the classroom turns on. At this moment that I suddenly remember, it's likely I'm going to have to fight here. Forgotten about sensing that when I enter the room. Uh -huh. So that's where you got to, Sensei. I've been looking all over for you. Of course, Teddy. As if you didn't know, you're the one who lured us both here. Oh my, did you figure it out? I didn't have a choice after those guys decided on their own to horn in on the fun. Oh, so they, okay. A journal in the matter gives me a twisted smile. Could Aegis son's mission be something that would cause him trouble? Can't figure out what his motives are, but he's using us to crush each other. In other words, she's the next challenger that's being set against me. I guess Sun seems to understand this as well and is staring at the monitor with quiet animosity. Sorry about this. Do you know the rule of this tournament? Only the victor of each match may move on. Yes? I have nothing against you, but I'm in a hurry for my own reasons. Neither of us, in other words, can back down. Then there should be no hard feelings. I guess Sun is refreshingly straightforward about this. She immediately takes a fighting stance. But her thought comes to me. It's tough being forced to fight my friends, but having to hurt someone that I don't even know is just as bad. Another thought comes on the heels of that one. I don't know this girl. Perhaps her appearance means that there are urgent problems that an ordinary student like me can't fathom. What gives me the right to stop her on her mission? Shouldn't I know what's at stake before I take that from her? Thankfully, it seems that she hasn't gone mad like my other friends. Perhaps the enemy doesn't care about clouding the minds of people who don't know each other. If we're still capable of understanding each other, then we should talk this over before we do that anything. Do. We will speak more of this after one of us wins. Mm, okay. She's a robot. She could just put herself back together. <laughs> I don't know if it works like that. Aikasan says this so quickly as if she's reading my mind. For a moment I'm struck as uh, by how she could have known that I was thinking, but I realize she's right. What a good would it do for us to talk things over? True, the loser cannot leave this room, but until we have a battle, neither one of us is going anywhere. It doesn't really matter if we can come to an understanding or not. If we have a fight, none of our goals are going to be accomplished. If that's the case, then we better it's better if we don't hear about each other's problems before we fight. That could be why Aegis son hasn't told me anything. It must be her version of kindness. I silently ready my sword. Aegis son appears to smile slightly when I do. Right, I'm not going to give up on what I'm fighting for either. I need Nanako and my friends to be safe. Now I have to make sure that Miss President is okay. We'll use everything I can to protect them. So thank her for her, the, for her consideration. I make a point to announce that I'm ready to start and the fight. Here goes. There's no need to hold back. Indeed. Let us do battle. Is it bad that I feel bad for the computers if I win?
Time for gun. <laughs> yeah. Time for gun. Hmm. Okay. Oh my god. Auto. Oh my god. Holy heck. I don't think I'm gonna win this. close holy heck that was really close oh i did it yes yeah, same you is it bad that i was rooting for i guess yes What the heck, Teddy? Machine with the power of persona. She was made to fight shadows, but I have no idea what she was capable of. I feel like my mind's being drained even more than my body. It angers me to see the generals watching over us with an expression of joy, as if we were some performers for his amusement. I look up and glare at the monitor. I don't know why you're making us fight, but it's pointless. We aren't fighting because we hate each other. The reason we can fight is because we respect and trust each other. Yeah. A low growl. The only sound I hear. The real, te the real Teddy's never made such a hateful sound. It's actually rather scary. Oh. The image on the monitor distorts along with that outburst. The general's having trouble remembering to act as someone else, and his face bulges and ripples disturbingly as his hate pours through the screen. Any pretense at copying the adorable stupidity of the real Teddy is gone now. I notice that the voice spitting out these hateful words is not Teddy's either. Trust? So what if you don't hate each other? You're not like me. I was forced to fight against my will. I destroyed them with my own hands. Ah, so sh so he is a shadow. We should all have to go through that. The shadow, her shadow. The general on the monitor continues to rage. What are you rage. talking about? Why did you set this tournament up? The moment I say that, I feel the dots have become connected. This president had asked out of the blue if we were going to be forced to kill each other. The ominous mutterings of killing one another. Were these both something that had directly come from her past? Maybe she had been forced to fight against people she didn't want to fight. She had been forced to destroy something that was precious to her. No way to know that for sure, but it's possible. Considering this, it kind of explains why her shadow would have created a tournament like this. That is, she wanted us to feel what she went through. It might, be not, it might not be entirely correct, but I feel like I'm close to the truth. Did I just ask General Teddy, Teddy about my suspicious... Suspicions? But if I'm considering raising my voice... Pardon my eccentric entrance. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Someone comes crashing through the ceiling. What in the world? Or should I get signed to protect her from falling debris? Oh my god, the music too. <laughs> yeah, burn your dread, bro. Burn that dread. When I look up, I see a young woman emerge from the cloud of dust. Well, not as strange as I guess. She seems a little uncommon as well. But even beside that, why did she come through the ceiling? This room has doors. Makes no sense at all. I'm about to get to the heart of the matter with General Teddy, but the monitor in this room has been destroyed along with the ceiling. Though she seems oblivious to my confusion, the girl cocks her head and apologizes again. Oh, please excuse me. I didn't have the faintest idea that someone would be here. 
faintest? Fame? Fiend? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Something along those lines at any rate. What the hell is she talking about? Who in the world is this person? Mm, wait a second. The blue suit she's wearing, it looks familiar. That silver hair and golden eyes. Could it be- Are you from the Velvet Room? My, is this what's known as being hit on? <laughs> one where one woman approaches another based solely on appearance and bets on the inner self being equally attractive. Wow. No, I'm not hitting on you. You just remind me of someone I know. Okay, so that actually sounded like I was really hitting on her. No, I need to stop thinking about that. In any case, I need to ask Do her you something. Do not know anyone by the name of Margaret? Margaret? She repeats the name. Her face seems surprisingly useful. I've been taken aback by her bizarre speech and actions, but could this girl be younger than me? Her profile simps, uh, simultaneously evokes an image of a pondering philosopher and an innocent girl. I can't figure out exactly how to speak to her. Should I be more polite? I guess that doesn't matter too much. Anyway, worrying about the niceties isn't the most important thing right uh, now. Actually, we should introduce ourselves first. I'm Yu Narukami. Oh, that has slipped my mind also. My name is Elizabeth. Dear me. Yes! Dear me, I love Elizabeth. In such a mundane, remote place. Thinks of this world as a mundane place? That's confusing. Yes, you know about maybe out in the countryside, but I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. The girl Elizabeth suddenly bows elegantly Mark to me. Is indeed my sister's name. Can I take that to mean that you are another guest of that room? Mm-hmm. See. So she's Margaret's sister. That would explain why she reminds me Elizabeth of her. Son, huh? Well, I guess that's the case. It's true that there was a time when I visited that room. Igor, Margaret, and Elizabeth. Seems there'd be more people who call that place home than I thought. I think I'm glad I met Margaret last year instead of this girl. <laughs> Rude! I fucking love Elizabeth. But why is a resident of the Velvet Room here? Did Margaret send you with a message or something? I am currently utterly neglecting my duties. Is that so? Don't really tell me much, and I have no response anyway. What well, possessed her to come blasting through the ceiling instead of using the door? Decide not to bother asking her that. There's so many different people over the last year, but trying to have a conversation with this girl is like trying to ride a wild horse. She's going to ignore the direction I'm trying to steer us towards and just veer off wherever she wants. Best to just hold on and go along for the ride then. Maybe if I pay attention, she'll tell me something worth my time. Even if I try to ask her any questions, she'll likely be confused anyway. As I'm having that thought, the girl seems to have noticed my hesitation and starts to talk about herself. Her eyes are lit up with sincere passion. She is really she really is hard hard one to read. I have a certain desire. It may take a very long time for it to be realized. In order for my wish to be granted, I require a power much greater than what I have. We can't play as Elizabeth, can we? The power of the wild card that changes bonds into strength. I have a feeling that the key lies there. I know a little about the wild card, but... I feel that the first glue to granting my wish lies within that power. Glue? Glue? Glue. Influenza. <laughs> oh my god. Something along those lines at any rate. I'm having trouble coming up with the right words, but I can hear the sincerity in her speech. Probably. In other words, I think she means that the power of the wild card is related to her desire and came here. I don't think it's worth to ask how she knew I had that power or where she found out about it. Just as I'm struggling to follow the meandering path of her conversation, she brings up an outrageous suggestion. Might I suggest that you and I fight? I what? Someone please tell me how she reached that conclusion that this was a good idea. I don't think I have any chance of taking talking her out of it though. But of course I have to try, so I say Give me a break. <laughs> My expectations are ascending skyward at max speed. To be direct, I'd like for you to show me the potential slumbering within you. Um, let me make sure of something, just in case. You understand what I'm saying, right? There's no illusions at work? Such parlor tricks can get stopped. <laughs> I see. So you're actually in your right mind here. That's kind of, uh, impressive. Well, maybe she understood what I meant when I mentioned the illusions. If that's so, then she must be have at least some idea of what's going on around here. And even though she might understand it, she still wants to fight me. 
I wonder, though, if she's real unrelated to General Teddy's plan to invite herself to the tournament, do the usual rules apply? To think about this, Elizabeth untaps her foot on the ground and takes in a fighting posture. She really does want to fight. The huge leather-bound book in her hands opens, as if by itself. A torrent of powers pour from the open book with a blue light. I can't believe that this strange girl has such an imaginable power. She seems so aloof. No, it's be more correct to call it an air of imminent violence. All right. I won't be able to hold back. To be honest, I was really only saying that in hopes of bluffing her. I have absolutely no room to hold back in this fight. I heard Lee cast off my fear and focus on the upcoming battle. No room for doubt. I need to hit her with my full strength from the start. Even if I were to fight her with the intent of killing her, I'd be lucky not to end up dead myself. At least that's how I feel. Elizabeth's son calmly begins the battle. Let us do this. Your fate is in the cards. Oh, we are actually fighting her. Oh, cool. Thanks. My mom got cinnamon roll. I'll probably stop after this fight. We're actually fighting her. Wait, was she using... Oh, I'm dead. Okay, I got this. This is fine. Yeah, but that persona! Isn't that... Ryoji? Isn't it? Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, but I'm gonna end it here and go eat cinnamon, my mom's cinnamon. Oh! Never mind. Just when I thought I managed to throw her off balance. Ah, I wanna keep going. Pretty sure Ryoji is Nyx. Right! Right. They do look very similar though, don't they? Don't they? Ah. Mm. Yeah, I guess I'll end it here. I will definitely be playing more of this. Though, I can't say how good I'll be at it. Uh, I feel like I'll get better with practice. You know, as with all fighting games, I'll get better with practice. But, you've been going on for like three hours. Yeah, but I want to keep playing. I want to keep playing because it's only like 3 p.m. so I can keep going for a while but but yeah I'll probably stop here and eat cinnamon roll I'll probably play some fate or darkest dungeon or something later or maybe more of this who knows but uh, I'll see you guys okay you have a good day good night wherever you are and uh, I'll, I'll see I'll be seeing you bye bye Bye-bye.